Um, and now here's the most important statistical tool that you need to understand, and that is universally understood except when social justice comes into play. So here's a graph. This is very recent data on the gender breakdown of jobs in Silicon Valley. So here's some of the top Silicon Valley companies. And as you see in green, in the non-tech jobs, women are about 50% of the workforce in Silicon Valley. But in the tech jobs, it's below 20%, you know, averaging around 15, 17%. So look at that, look at that graph and tell me, do you see evidence in that graph of institutional or systemic sexism? Raise your hand if you see evidence of institutional or systemic sexism. Please raise your hand high right now. Anyone? What are you, you must be a bunch of, of right-wing libertarian. I can't believe it. I can't believe it because uh, normally you know, I've given, I've shown this at a few schools and a lot of hands go up. I mean, this is the definition of institutional or systemic sexism, typically, a gender disparity. Um, okay, so my next demonstration is gonna flub because, all right, here it is. So this is the gender gap in PhDs last year. So if you look at everybody in America who earned a PhD, uh, the distribution is this in engineering, it was about 75% men, uh, and then down to business, about whatever that is, 55% uh, men. So, all right, and raise your hand if you see institutional sexism or systemic sexism here. Okay, no hands. Well, a couple, okay, a couple hands. Okay, actually about, it's people sort of signaling to me because you, all right. Um, so at other schools I've been at, a lot of hands go up for this. And let's look at the other fields. So these are the other, other major fields. And in the other fields, women dominate. Um, as they have for uh, since the 90s, women uh, of course earn the vast well, women earn the majority of undergraduate degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs in this country. Women are doing very well in school. Men's performance is going down and down, especially the less educated, the bottom half of the income distribution. So women dominate the academy uh, at the level of degrees, um, and they they are getting different. They are getting PhDs in different fields than men. Um, now, maybe this is systemic sexism, or maybe it reflects something that we know with, I think, a fair degree of confidence now, um, which is that prenatal testosterone, when it, uh, uh, when, when it goes into the uterus or is generated, I'm, so, I'm sorry, we all start off as girls in utero, and then if there's a Y chromosome that triggers a cascade of events that lead to a little pulse of testosterone, which changes the genitalia to the male pattern and changes the brain to the male pattern. And as part of that transition from female to male, Brains become less good at empathizing, reading emotion, being sensitive, and more good, more gooder, better, at, at systemizing is the, is the what. But it, what comes out is that boys are more interested in playing with things and, uh, and girls more with uh, people. And this goes on to occupational choices. So a major review in Psych Bull found a lot of evidence for this. And you can see it in high school students' preferences for careers. So this is uh, data from the US News Raytheon STEM Index. And what this shows, so it, it, when students are, high school students are asked, what do you want to go into as an adult? What field do you want to go into? So this is a line for, for women who say science. And you can see that numbers actually been going up from 2000 to 2014. And actually this is the line for men here. So the line for men and women are basically indistinguishable if you just say science. So that's great. Women's interest in science has, has been uh, rising. But if, uh, so that's, that's the, these lines here. But if we look at specifically tech, you want to go into a technology. The line for boys in high school is much higher, several, many times higher than the line for girls. And actually, it's, and the gap is increasing. We are increasing our efforts to encourage women. That's great, but it's not having any effect. Um, and if you look at engineering, it's even more stark. So if you look at technology and engineering, high school boys really, really want to do it. And very few high school girls say that they want to do that. Now, um, maybe you can argue that that is a kind of sexism. Maybe you can push it back further. But at a certain point, at a certain point, I think you have to look at this graph and say, women are getting most of the PhDs, women are going into the sciences, but they're electing different sciences. And at what point do you say, until women are 50% of everything, it's sexism? Is that really a logical conclusion? So the deeper problem here, and the reason why I'm so concerned about this, why I'm spending so much time on this, is that there's a really, really deep problem in the social sciences, which is that every one of us, everyone in every social science department knows that correlation does not imply causation. We know this so deeply that, I mean, we never let each other get away with it. If you're at a cocktail party and somebody who's not a social scientist says something 
you know, like we can't stop ourselves saying, well, but correlation doesn't apply across it. And if we're dreaming and someone in my dream, I mean, I correct them in my dreams, like we all know this. So here's a graph. Uh, so autism, as autism has been going up since the 90s, so has organic food sales. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think that autism is caused by organic food? Or do you think that it's autistic people who buy organic food and that's why they go up? Which is it? And if you're a social scientist, you're, uh, uh, probably neither. It, it's, that's just a correlation. And there's a lot of ways to explain that. Here's another one I just found from Googling. More buck for your bang. People who have more sex make the most money. So what do you think? Do you think that if you're currently in a relationship and you have more sex, your income will go up? Do you think that's the way it works? Of course not. There's a third variable. So a social scientist would instantly say, what's the third variable? And the third variable is extroversion and openness to experience. People who have that trait have more sex and make more money. Okay, third, we know this. We all know this. But suddenly you present people with a disparity and they all say, oh my God, causation. The fact that that person is a woman is why she wasn't hired. All we have is a correlation between gender and outcomes, but we impute causation and we know the causation is discrimination. Could be individual or it could be systemic, but it's discrimination. So at Social Justice U, they teach you that if a group is underrepresented, it proves, or at least strongly suggests, that there is systemic or structural discrimination against that group. That is what you learn at SJU. Now, this is wrong. This is just flat out wrong. There's no defense of, I shouldn't say there's no defense. I'm sure someone will have a defense. And, but I believe this is wrong. And um, that's, I'm coming to that. Um, at Truth University, we teach you that correlation does not imply causation. In fact, this is such an important lesson. I want you all to say it out loud with me right now. One, I'll say one, two, three, and say, say one, two, three. Correlation does not imply causation. Thank you. So please remember that and spout that back to your professors when they violate it. Now, I do not want to deny that there is racism and sexism. I do not want to deny the indignities that women and especially African-Americans feel. I read the stories from my students. I'm not saying everything is fine. But what I'm saying is, to simply argue that a disparity shows systemic anything is wrong. It's an invitation to look more closely. By all means, look more closely. We need social justice activists to commit themselves to look more closely. That's great. That's necessary. And sometimes they find it. But you have to look for third variables and you have to ultimately, the most powerful test is an experiment, uh, experimental manipulation. And so one was done. Um, Will Williams and Cece at Cornell they made up all kinds of resumes that showed equivalent levels of research success and productivity. They sent them out to faculty in STEM fields and they looked, figured, and they found out who was, in, who was selected, uh, shortlisted for an interview. And what do you think happened? Yes, there was bias. Which way do you think it went? Everybody is on the left. Everybody is really concerned about getting women into science. Everybody's really concerned about gender inequality, racial inequality. So of course these professors would prefer to bring the woman. They've been trying since the 90s to equalize things. So of course, if you're applying and you're a woman, of course you have an advantage. And I'm not saying that's wrong. That's, I understand that, that's fine. But to then say that the disparity is, shows that the STEM fields are systemically sexist gets it exactly backwards. They're systemically anti-sexist. And so the next time anyone, especially one of your professors, tells you that some disparity shows um, uh, shows a violation of social justice. What I want you to say is disparate outcomes do not imply disparate treatment. On the count of three, please say it loud with me right now. One, two, three. Disparate outcomes do not imply disparate treatment. Okay, thank you. Okay, so again, it, it is an invitation. Uh, it is an invitation to get to work and to look, but you know, false accusations are bad things. And in our society, in academic society, false accusations of racism and sexism are virtue signaling. People do it all the time because it's a good thing to accuse people of racism and sexism. But I think that's wrong.